Welcome back to TPS. New light here, which is good because the old one was blinding me, so I did the entire video like every time I had a video. We'll see how this works. The quarterback position is one of the most important positions, if not the most important position in the game. Any half decent NFL quarterback will make 10 million plus annually. Some teams are smart and tactical in getting their quarterbacks to sign bargain deals. Other clubs invest way too much money in the wrong guy. Here are the five best and the five worst quarterback contracts in the NFL right now. At TPS, we post videos every single day. So don't forget to click the subscribe button to subscribe. Then click the notification bell to be notified when we post a new video. For your information, rookie contracts were not included in our list because those are obviously the best deals around. For example, Lamar Jackson is set to make just over $3 million on his rookie contract in 2020. Does that seem fair? Yeah, we didn't think so. Number 5. Best Nick Foles Hear us out! Foles' four-year $88 million pact with the Jacksonville Jaguars was a giant mistake. And yet, GM David Caldwell managed to unload it after just one year to the Chicago Bears in a 2020 offseason trade. But the Bears managed to turn this into one of the league's better quarterback bargain deals. Foles agreed to a restructured three-year contract worth $24 million. $21 million of it is guaranteed. Foles' 2020 cap hit comes in at a very reasonable $5.33 million, followed by $9.33 million in each of the next two years. There are plenty of incentives for Foles to hit, too. So he really has the chance to make up for some of the lost money in the restructured deal. Say what you want about Bears GM Ryan Pace, but this was a savvy move. They have a reliable veteran that can push Mitch Trubisky, who should have been cut loose by now. It's only a matter of when Foles becomes a starter, and given his previous working experience with head coach Matt Nagy, offensive coordinator Bill Lazor, and quarterbacks coach John DiFilippo, there is good reason to believe Foles can be the real deal in Chicago. With a strong rushing game and championship caliber defense, the Bears just need Foles to play like a solid game manager. But we're talking about a Super Bowl 52 champion and MVP here. Foles is great when he's on his game, especially in the postseason. $24 million for a guy who's already reached the mountaintop with a very affordable cap hit? Give the Bears some credit where it's due. Number 5 Worst Kirk Cousins The Minnesota Vikings have gotten mixed results out of the three-year, fully guaranteed $84 million contract they handed Kirk Cousins in the 2018 offseason. After an underwhelming first season in mini, Cousins rebounded and got them to the playoffs in 2019. They even upset the New Orleans Saints before bowing out to the San Francisco 49ers in the NFC Divisional Round. For his efforts, the 2019 Pro Bowler received a two-year, $66 million contract extension. All but $5 million of it was guaranteed. At first, the deal might not look so bad considering that any above-average signal caller these days tends to land a deal around $100 million. But Cousins cap hit goes from $21 million in 2020 to $31 million in 2021 and all the way up to $45 million in 2022. That's a lot of money for a guy that's in the third or fourth tier of quarterbacks and for a guy that has one playoff win on his resume. Cousins will likely regress in 2020 with Stefan Diggs and offensive coordinator Kevin Stefanski gone too. The Vikings seemingly got way too excited about one playoff win from Cousins. If they went one and done, do you think he would have played out his third year in mini? Not for us to think so. And don't get us started on his record against winning teams. Best Jimmy Garoppolo In the 2018 offseason, Garoppolo inked a five-year, $137.5 million extension from the San Francisco 49ers. Garoppolo had won all five of his starts close to the 2017 season. Garoppolo's 2018 season was cut short after he suffered an ACL tear in Week 3, but he came back with a vengeance in 2019 helping San Fran win 13 games en route to a Super Bowl appearance where they lost a heartbreaker to the Kansas City Chiefs. A lot of people blamed Garoppolo for that loss, but come on now. He didn't allow that third and 15 play to Tyreek Hill that turned the tide. Compare Garoppolo's yearly cap hit to other quarterbacks and you'll see that he actually has one of the better QB contracts in the NFL. It gets no higher than $27 million throughout the 2022 season. And here's the catch. If the 49ers were to release Jimmy G, they wouldn't be on the hook for too much money either. The dead cap hit for 2021 would be a mere $2.8 million and just $1.4 million for 2022. So after the 2020 season, they really do have an easy way out of this contract if necessary. But we're having a tough time hating on a contract for a guy who won 19 of his first 24 starts and made the Super Bowl in his first full season as a starter. No matter how you feel about Jimmy G as a quarterback, 
you cannot deny the fact that this deal is very team-friendly for San Fran. For worst, Ben Roethlisberger. It's not easy putting Big Ben on here. We're talking about a two-time Super Bowl champion, a perennial pro bowler who led the NFL in passing guards during his last healthy season in 2018. But the Steelers and me have to be regretting that giant two-year $68 million extension they handed to him in the 2019 offseason. The then 37-year-old went on to suffer a season-ending elbow injury in Week 2 against the Seattle Seahawks. Roethlisberger restructured his deal in the 2020 offseason, but the cap hits are still worrisome for the Steelers, $23.75 million in 2020 and a whopping $41.25 million in 2021. Yikes. For a quarterback in his late 30s with a long injury history, coming off of a potentially career-ending elbow injury, the Steelers should be worried. Hindsight is 2020, but the Steelers probably should have done a year-by-year -year thing with Big Ben, like the New Orleans Saints have with Drew Brees. Roethlisberger pondered retirement in 2017, and I wish he would have. So the Steelers should have seen the warning. You see how I feel about this. I'm not even hiding it. So the Steelers should have seen the warning signs. They better hope that Roethlisberger can stay on the field and produce like his old self when he returns. Otherwise, this contract is going to get even uglier in a short amount of time. The very best, Philip Rivers. How often do you get a perennial pro bowler and future Hall of Famer on a cheap one-year $25 million deal? The Indianapolis Colts needed a quarterback after an inconsistent performance from Jacoby Brissett, who couldn't quite replace the production that the retired Andrew Luck left behind. Luckily for the Colts, the Los Angeles Chargers and Phillip Rivers agreed to part ways. The seasoned veteran is taking it year by year at this stage of his career, so the Colts were thrilled to get him on a one-year, no-risk, high-reward deal. If Rivers pans out and takes Indy back to the playoffs, great, give him a new deal. If he flops and decides it's time to retire, hey, it was only a one-year deal, so no future financial repercussions. But given his history and familiarity with head coach Frank Reich, along with a top-tier offensive line for support, we do expect Rivers to flourish with his new team. The very worst, Carson Wentz. It's Wentz health that has him on this list. He was on his way to the 2017 MVP award for suffering an ACL tear in week 14. He was limited to 11 games in 2018, recovering from an ACL tear while later nursing a back injury. Once again, Nick Foles had to step in and play hero as he got at the Philadelphia Eagles to the postseason. Wentz bounced back nicely with 4,039 passing yards and 27 touchdowns in 2019, helping an injury ravaged Philly team claim the NFC East division crown. But he suffered a concussion early in their wildcard playoff game against the Seattle Seahawks. Josh McCown had to play out the rest of the game, which ended in a 17-9 defeat. You factor in all these injuries, and you can see why we're worried about the four-year $128 million contract the Eagles gave Wentz in the 2019 offseason. The Eagles picked up his fifth-year option before giving Wentz the monster extension. What if he gets banged up again in 2020? A smart and savvy GM like Howie Roseman should always get the benefit of the doubt, but if Wentz doesn't stay healthy, this deal will be quite the $128 million disaster. Two best Teddy Bridgewater With Drew Brees sidelined for five games, Bridgewater took over as the Saints starter and won all five of those contests. That told the football world that he was truly starting caliber after spending the previous two seasons as a backup. The revamped Carolina Panthers signed Bridgewater to a three-year, $63 million contract in the offseason, opting to part ways with 2015 MVP and franchise star Cam Newton. Hey, Panthers fans shouldn't complain. They have a quality starter on one of the best bargain deals in the league. Bridgewater should do wonders with new head coach Matt Rule, and the supporting cast that includes Christian McCaffrey, DJ Moore, Curtis Samuel, and Robbie Anderson. Bridgewater's deal carries a very modest $14 million cap hit in 2020, which places him outside the top 15 among NFL quarterbacks. The cap hit increases to $23 million in 2021 and $26 million in 2022. But if the Panthers don't like what they have in Bridgewater after two years, hey, they have just a $5 million dead cap charge for 2022 should they decide to get rid of him. Bridgewater should perform just fine in Carolina's loaded new look offense, but even if he doesn't pan out, the Panthers cleverly structured this deal, so there won't be any serious financial burdens. You earned this one, Teddy. Now go out there and set yourself up for a, well, a bigger non-barking contract for 2023 and beyond. Number two worst, Matthew Stafford. Back in 2017, Stafford was awarded a five-year extension worth $135 million from the Detroit Lions. Stafford had guided them to the postseason in 2016, so this felt like a fair deal at the time. Fast forward three seasons later, and yeah, it's not a good contract whatsoever. 
The Lions missed the playoffs in 2017, 18, and 19. Stafford saw all of his stats dip in 2018 when he threw for just 3,777 passing yards after hitting the 4,000-yard mark in each of the previous seven seasons. A back injury forced him to miss eight games in 2019, too, and the Lions predictably crumbled without their quarterback. We like Stafford as a quarterback and as a person, but for a guy who has never won a playoff game, his contract is just too much. He hasn't elevated his play whatsoever since Calvin Johnson's abrupt retirement in 2016. Detroit just hasn't been able to make any progress since they handed Stafford that deal. His production continues to go downhill, and yet the organization stubbornly refuses to make any changes. Make one of us GM for a day, and Bob Quinn and Matt Patricia would be fired in an instant, and Stafford would be traded. There's just no justifying his contract at this point, and looks worse and worse every year. The Lions will take on a $19 million dead cap hit for 2021 if they release Stafford. At least it drops down to $6 million in 2022, but knowing the Lions will have received another extension worth $100 million plus by net. Number 1. Best Drew Brees The all-time passing yards and passing touchdown King pondered retirement before opting to sign a new two-year $50 million contract. Don't worry about Brees' age, this is a bargain of a deal for the Saints, who are bent on winning at least one more Super Bowl for number 9. Breeze deal carries a reasonable $23.65 million cap hit in 2020. It jumps up to $36.15 million if he plays in 2021, but that's for another day. And Breeze can always restructure it. Considering that younger quarterbacks are now earning well over $25 million on new deals, this contract for Breeze is a huge win for New Orleans. Tom Brady is two years older than Breeze. His two-year $50 million deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers is fully guaranteed. Sorry, but there's too much financial risk there if you're the Bucks. Breeze deal is really as safe as it gets for a quarterback in his 40s. Now, if the Saints can just capture another Super Bowl before he retires. The number one worst, Jared Goff. After leading the Rams to their second straight NFC West Division title in the Super Bowl 53, Goff was awarded a mega four-year extension worth $134 million. One year later, that deal has become a disaster. Goff struggled behind an atrocious offensive line, and the Rams finished 9-7 in 2019 to miss the postseason. Goff's new deal carries a ridiculous $36 million cap hit in 2020, the highest among all quarterbacks. His cap hit will be $30 million or higher every year until 2023, and it jumps down to a still very high $26 million in 2024. And don't look at the dead cap numbers either. The Rams will be better off paying Goff to sit on the bench instead of releasing him. Other than that, all is fine. The cap-strapped Rams released a banged-up running back Todd Gurley for trading away a respected veteran to wind out Brandon Cooks. They lost a plethora of core pieces from their 2018 NFC Championship team, and it's thanks in large part to the awful contract handed out by Les Snead. Maybe Sean McVay will work his magic again and help Goff regain his 2017 and 18 MVP-like form. But right now, this is unquestionably the worst contract among all quarterbacks. Who do you think holds the best and worst quarterback contracts in the NFL right now? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. If you're new here, subscribe. We'd love it if you did, because you could see more cool videos every single day. Pop it up on your screen. All the time. And if you liked the video, then like the video. We'd really appreciate it. Until next time, don't forget to tune into TPS for more awesome videos and wash your hands. Stay safe. We'll see you next time.